Let's talk about the Advanced Properties dialog. I've got the Advanced Properties open on a basic item. We have a toolbar across the top. The properties that make up the item on the left are the formula column for any of the calculations, the input units, the manual adjustment column, the result column, and the output unit. We can lock the individual property. We can make the property visible or hidden. And we can also make the property an input property, all from the main property screen. Along our top toolbar, we have the Add Property button. You'll use this to add any new or additional properties. The Insert property. This will insert a property between the two selected items. Edit property will edit the individual property. Delete the property. Insert property, that's the insert property of another item into the formula bar. We have our mathematical functions, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, right and left parentheses, and then our special functions for rounding up and rounding down. We have copy and paste buttons. We have our navigation buttons to move items up and down the list for reordering your property list. We have a refresh button. Uh, this is our current view. We're showing the normal view. This is all visible items. We can show only the input items, show all normal items plus the hidden items, or we can show all system properties as well. The form layout button takes us into laying out the form view. This is when you have multiple input items. You can arrange how they look on that form. And events, if you're actually going to program any scripting functions. These are your uh, events that you can fire on a specific property. If we go back to any property and edit the property, we're in the Edit Property window. We can change the name of the property, the type of the property. Uh, types, you'll see we have a whole list of different property types. The most common that the end user will use will be the number, uh, text, memo, checkbox, um, perhaps an image or a script. We have the expression box if you're going to program with a Pascal or a basic expression in the formula. The item group. We see we have our main groupings here. If you want to add your own, you can just type in a new name into the item group or select from one of the existing. The tool tip, if you're working on an input property, you can put a tool hint that can be just a, a little text line that says what that input is supposed to be or what you're intending someone to use that input for. A remembered value would be to remember the last value that was used on that property. Parsing the formula, if your property has a formula value, you can parse that formula to either show the text of the formula or to show the result. The input options, this is where you'll select to make it an input item. Store on parent, store on item. In most cases, um, your option will be store on item. However, if you're going to store a value on a parent item such as a assembly or um, or a digitizer you can actually store the value such as something like a wall height that is used by several other child items that way you're only setting that item value one time and populating all the rest the input condition could be used to only show a property if a certain condition exists uh, let's say for instance if your quantity was greater than 20, you wanted a property to be displayed as an input. That's where you would type that, and you would type that in by using the left bracket um, quantity would be QTY, so you're using the property name and closing it with the right bracket. Uh, quantity being greater than some number that input on the property screen, on the form or the input screen.
compiled options if you're compiling parts and assemblies for um, a plug-in your compiled options would be uh, deny read, deny write, or deny OLA script access. Deny read would not allow the end user to read the contents of the property. Deny write would deny the user the ability to edit that property. And denying the OLA script access would prevent any other script from accessing that property. Input units, uh, output units, pretty self-explanatory. If your input units are in feet, you can select your output units to be feet, or you could select inches. It'll do the conversion behind the scenes. Setting the property to hidden or locked. The decimal places. How many decimal places do you want visible? When creating new items of this type, what do you want this function to do? So when you're applying this item to your job, do you want to ignore the formula? Do you want to inherit the formula? Or do you want it just to be a normal formula result? Uh, this is really going to depend on what property you're you're editing. So in this case, this this is the name property, so the choice here is going to be ignore. I just want it to use the same name that's in there. If it were a mathematical calculation, let me open up one of the other properties here, such as the cost total. You'll see this one is inheriting the formula. So when I apply this to the job, it's actually going to take this entire formula with it and populate that formula with that uh, formula. If I were doing a list, if I wanted to create a drop-down list, I could type in a simple list right in this this white area here in this box. If I wanted to just select from a certain range of values, I could just type those out. If I wanted to use my custom list from the list tab, I could browse to the list, selecting the list that would show up here. Uh, I can show a search bar, I can set the result column, uh, visible columns in the drop-down, and properties to set uh, based on that value. A tree list is generated from a file path. We'll have more examples on these later. Uh, we can execute a plugin from here. Um, we can create an auto list, and what an auto list is would be to automatically create a list from any values typed in throughout the job. The group headings, you can see we have item number, or we have item estimating work breakdown structure. If you double click on those headings, it will collapse the groups. And double clicking again will expand those groups. When using the adjust column for the manual adjust, I'll just do a quick example here under quantity. If I were to enter in 500 for my quantity, if I wanted to adjust that quantity by 50, I could just type in 50 in the adjust. Or I could type in 10% to add an additional 10% 10, 10 to that number. Just a handy way of making some manual adjustments to your takeoff if you need to. That works for any of the columns. To insert a property from a different item altogether, I could select the formula field, press the insert property button, that's going to open up the insert into formula dialog. And you'll see I have a list of all the other templates. This could be something that's already in the job. But by selecting any of the other items, you'll see I get a list of their properties. And I would simply just select one of those other properties. and you'll see it pulls in the correct formula. The type, this is a pretty important one here, the types drive everything in PlanSwift. All of the objects are essentially the same, that they're all made up of properties. And the type sets what properties are available to the item. So if I look at the drop-down list, you'll see this nice long list of different types within the system. Typically, um, all the end user really needs to be worried about are going to be the material, labor, equipment, subcontract, and other on the types, unless you're getting into some really custom stuff. So if I were to change this to a material item, I'll just type out material, hit enter. Now that's going to load up the material properties. And you'll see some of those have changed as far as what's available. 
if you ever get into the situation where you'll see under quantity I've got this formula that I don't want if I want to bring that back to um, what it originally was I can simply delete that property since that was inherited before I can double click on the inheritance path at the bottom and you'll see it imported the quantity field back in so you can use your types uh, to set what type of object you're creating and again like I had indicated material equipment labor subcontract and other are the default cost groups uh, that the reports are using so when you're creating your new your new parts and assemblies you want to take that into consideration now you can also create uh, new templates uh, based on on the type as well so if you were going to create a new area template you would just type in area let that load and you'll see you have all your area properties then you could add your own additional properties or edit the properties that are currently here to suit your needs as with all the previous versions of Plan Swift, whenever you're creating your formulations in the properties, you're just going to use property names, uh, just like I used takeoff here. Anything inside of a bracket is going to refer to another property. Anything inside of a bracket preceded by dot dot backslash is going to look up one level to the property with the same name as whatever you type in here. If you're looking up the same level as well, um, or up to the next level as well, and you want to pull something in, you can also use open bracket dot dot close bracket. That's going to look up the tree until it finds this this property name here, in this case cost each, and inherit that value down. The other thing to consider in PlanSwift 9, especially if you're bringing in um, new, pro new parts and new assemblies, um, really the only fields you have to worry about setting up are going to be uh, your quantitative takeoff uh, whatever that calculation is going to be you're going to need to quantify the uh, part or um, material and set the cost each cost each and markup percent so once you have your cost each entered in here I'll put ten dollars and put a markup of ten percent and you'll see that's calculated for our price each which is our cost each plus the markup each markup each is calculating what that markup cost is or that markup price our cost total is quantity times the cost each so we can get a cost for our item and then we can get our marked up uh, profit and sell price the important thing to remember is that all objects uh, regardless of what they are, it could be a uh, an area linear, you know, a digitized item. It could be a part, a material um, assembly. It could be a folder. They're all made up of properties. They're all defined by the type. If I wanted to change this to a folder, it's going to load up the properties for a folder. And you'll notice that I loaded up those properties cost each and markup percent came over as well since I changed those properties. No matter where you're at in Plan Swift, you can edit those properties by right clicking on the item selecting the properties button. Here we're in the input view, here we're in the form view, and here we're in the advanced view for that object. Well, This video should give you a pretty good understanding of how the properties windows works what it contains and what the different types are. Now, like I said you're really going to be focused on the types of material, subcontract, labor, equipment and other. Those five cost categories that match up to the the uh, supplied reports in Plan Swift. That doesn't mean that you have to use those. You can certainly create types of your own. You can certainly add the properties that you want and create your own reports based on the nomenclature that you want to use.